Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in November. So in total, I read 17 books in the month of November. I actually read 20, but three of them are for a secret TBR video releasing to y'all in December, so I'm not gonna be talking about them today. I also had one did not finish DNF. Out of the 17 books that I'm talking about today, 12 were audiobooks, four were ebooks, and one was a physical read. So as always, we're going to be talking about these books from my least favorite to my favorite, so let's get started. Of course, first we're gonna talk about my DNF for the month, which was His Human Surrogate by Michelle Mills. I'm going to be talking about the first book in this series later on in this video. Um, so I read the first book and wanted to continue on, and this is book number two. And this is basically an alien romance book where our heroine, in order to become to this planet that her best friend is on, her best friend was the heroine from book one, she has to be an alien surrogate. She has to like work, she has to be on the planet with a work visa and that's the only job that a human woman can have on this planet. And so she becomes a human surrogate to this red alien man who's actually her best friend. Um, they met online like um, a couple months before she came here because he is the brother to her best friend's husband, if that makes sense. Hopefully you understand that. Anyway, so they know each other and he's like been in love with her. She's been in love with him, but they like have never expressed their feelings to one another. It's unrequited love, basically. He's like, oh, you can be my surrogate and that's how you can get on this planet, whatever. And I did not finish this because there was a consent issue for me. Basically this guy works in kind of like their version of the FBI or like secret service or whatever. It's really freaking weird. He like goes out on a mission and tells her that she's gonna be home alone in his new house and she can take care of the house, do whatever she wants to the house. He actually has a secret room in the house that she doesn't know about that when he goes on that mission, he gets in trouble with those people. And so then he comes back to the house, hides in that secret room and doesn't tell her that he's there. And then like watches her on cameras the whole time, watches her do stuff, secretly does stuff to her when she's asleep in the house. That's a no, sir. No, sir. I was very shocked about this book and that this happened because nothing like that happened ever in book one. I really enjoyed book one. This one is a no. No, 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 go. No, go. No, thank you. I don't have to explain anymore, I don't think, of why I did not finish this book. <laughs> so my least favorite book of the month that I actually finished was unfortunately Awakened by Moni Boyce. Now my lovely ladies and I, I'm in a book club, The Lovely Ladies Book Club with Ashley and Jen. I'm linking our live show down below. We talked about this book and we all were very disappointed in it. This is a paranormal romance all about a oracle woman she realizes that she is an oracle and she has these witches protecting her and everything like that and she falls for a witch who's protecting her and they have this banter dislike to love relationship and i found this premise so promising i was looking forward to it so many of my friends liked it gave it high ratings on goodreads i don't understand why <laughs> the premise of this book is great the plot for it and the execution for it not my thing. Also the writing, I could not get into the writing for the life of me. I honestly found it really juvenile. These characters acted like they were teenagers and they were either in their 20s or 30s, I don't remember, but they literally acted like they were 16 years old. I did not mesh well with the writing. I found it really juvenile and just like not an adult romance book. Like I feel like the author should have just made this a YA book, like a young adult book, and it would have been amazing. Hi guys, sorry if the angle, the lighting, I, as in my appearance, have changed. Um, we kind of had a pet fiasco in the middle of filming, or right at the beginning of filming for me, um, and we had to take our pets, our dogs, to the vet for the past two hours, but everything's fine, everyone's good, everyone's happy, healthy, we're good now. Just wanna let y'all know if you notice any shift, that is why. Anyway, about Awakened by Moni Boyce, I don't wanna, drag this on too long. Um, you can go check out our live show. I'm linking it down below. It just wasn't my thing and I'm very confused as to why people love it so much. If you love it, that's great. I just personally don't and I don't really understand. It just, it, it didn't have that development that I wanted, you know, from like an adult romance paranormal book, if you know what I'm saying. So 
I'm in the minority though and apparently people love it so maybe take other people's word for it. Next I'm going to be talking about two books a part of the same series. This is the Zodiac Queen series. I read the first book Aries I think for the Kindle Clear at Readathon um, last month or the month before that. Um, and so I read the next two because I actually downloaded the bind up of all three first three books for free on Kindle one day and um, when they were free one day. So I ended up reading Taurus. Taurus. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about zodiac signs or how to pronounce them. I only know Virgo because that's why. <laughs> so I read this one and then I also read Gemini. So basically both of these books are part of the Zodiac Queen series. If you don't know what the series is about, it's about this woman named Novali and she just turned 18 and when she was 12 her parents ended up passing away and her um, uncle got guardianship of her and she is actually a princess. Her uncle, a cruel man, has her sign a contract or basically signs her over to this zodiac island. And this island, there are 12 different floors of this building. This whole island is basically just like one building. And each floor is a different zodiac. And so um, you have a ruler in each zodiac. So when she turns 18 for a whole year, one month out of the year, she will be the property of the leading man of a zodiac. So in Aries, she was owned by the leader of Aries for a whole month and then she gets passed on to another and another and another. And by the end of it, there is a virgin auction for her. So the whole time she is a virgin. So it's a very interesting premise. I ended up just giving both of these books three stars. Not really my like favorite thing ever. Like these books aren't my favorite thing ever. I will say I'm addicted and want to know what happens to the story. The story is very interesting, but the character development isn't really my favorite and I don't really like how short they are. I wish all of them were kind of like one book and each chapter was possibly a new person. That would be pretty cool I think. But overall, not my favorite but I found them highly entertaining and these are very dark by the way. Like there's sexual assault, trigger warnings galore. So educate yourself if you want to know the trigger warnings for these books. Also forgot to mention I gave uh, Awakened by Money Boyce. 2.5 out of 5 stars. I forgot to give the rating for it. Then I ended up reading The Royal Rogue by Karina Halley. This is book number four of the Nordic Royal series. I read all of them to this point. And my favorite one is the third book, which is a Nordic King that I really love. This one I think is my least favorite out of all of the books. Maybe the first, The Swedish Prince or something like that is possibly also my least favorite. I don't know, but this one just didn't uh, hit the mark for me, if you know what I mean. I mean, it was good. Karina Halley does an amazing job at writing. I love her writing, but I feel like the story just didn't mesh well with me. So this is another royalty romance. This is actually about the sister to um, the king who's in a Nordic king. This is about his sister who is a princess and she's actually a single mother and she has been ridiculed by the press because she is a divorced royal. Her, I think her husband cheated on her and um, she's now a single mother when her brother, the king of Norway, is on vacation with his new wife and his twin daughters. She has to basically be like the step in royal while he's gone, like take over the country while he's gone. While she's doing that, in pops the uh, royal family of Monaco. They stop by the palace for a visit and they've never met before. So one of the sons, a part of this family, is Prince Orlando of Monaco. And he is very well known as being a playboy. But when our heroine and our hero meet for the first time, they can't help but be immediately attracted to one another. And the may or may not agree to a one night stand. This is in the summer, by the way, so I'm not spoiling it for you, but it may or may not lead to a surprise baby. If you're not into the surprise baby trope, I don't know if you'd like this one. Um, I'm fine with it. If it's in the summary, at least, I'm cool with it. I'm looking, I'm like, I know it's there, you know? And so they're trying to figure out their relationship and the inner workings of her being pregnant and them being royals and them not actually being married. Overall, this just wasn't my favorite thing ever. I just don't think I liked the baby aspect of it. Like if there was like a different plot line other than there being a baby, I would have liked it a lot more because like our hero wouldn't have gotten back with the heroine if there wasn't a baby. Like I don't feel like there was any chance that he would go back to her if there was not a baby. So I don't think I like that. So um, ended up just giving it three stars. I honestly would say skip this one. If you're not really interested in it, I'd read the other books in the series. Then I had my November TBR jar pick of the month, which was The Last Viking by Sandra Hill. 
I actually have a whole entire dedicated reading vlog for this book. So I'm not going to talk about my feelings really at all in this. I'll just tell you I gave it a 3.5 and um, I really loved it at the beginning and then it kind of went downhill. And if you want to know my reasons why I thought that, I'll go watch my dedicated reading vlog for it. There are no spoilers. There's one very minor one at the end of the reading vlog, um, but it's very minor. And I tell you beforehand, if you want to skip that part, this book takes place in 1997. It was written in 1997, I'm pretty sure. Our heroine is a teacher at a university, but she's also taking on the challenge of helping finish her passed away grandfather's um, recreation of a Viking ship. One night when she comes home, there is a Viking sitting in her cabin that she has. And he may or may not be from the time 997 and is actually a real life Viking who time traveled. He will possibly help her finish building this Viking ship. This was super duper funny. I even tell y'all which lines were my favorite while reading it in the reading vlog. So be sure to check out my reading vlog for this book. Now we're going to be talking about His Human Nanny by Michelle Mills. Now I believe I heard Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers talking about this one and talking about how she really enjoyed it. So I definitely want to pick this one up. It is an alien romance one. Now this is is the first book to the book that I talked about earlier that I didn't finish. Um, this one was really entertaining, really fun to read. So this woman ends up becoming a nanny to alien twin babies. And these babies are the species that live on this planet that she gets transported to. They basically look like Satan. They're red, have horns, barbed tails, everything. The father of these twins have kind of been manipulated by the twins mother. They're not together at all, but he really needs help. They're twin babies who can breathe fire so um he needs help and so she comes into the picture and helps him out and they may or may not fall for each other through all of this i found this one highly entertaining i really liked how our heroine just fell into the role of being a nanny i have been a nanny in the past and so i know how being a nanny can be and um i feel like she took on the role amazingly because she's never been a nanny before that point and so I really liked how she educated herself to the best of her ability and really um, tried to learn as much as possible to help provide and care for these kids and I just loved her romance with our hero in here. It was overall just like a sweet wholesome like homey alien romance so nothing really major happens. This is mostly character based so if you're not into character based stories I don't know if you'd enjoy this one but I did and I gave it a four out of five stars. I don't recommend the second one though and I don't know if I'm gonna be reading the third one. Absolutely no idea. <laughs> then I have Fantasy Lover by Sherilyn Kenyon. I read this during the Paranormal Romance Readathon. This book deals with paranormal aspects and also mythology, which I thought was pretty cool. So basically our heroine has been in kind of a rut, a slump when it comes to men and her best friend ends up finding this book in the bookstore or library she works at. And it has this beautiful man on the cover and turns out that you can summon him a night of pleasure possibly um they don't actually think that they can do it but they just do it for fun turns out this man ends up appearing in her bedroom all of a sudden so julian has been cursed to live inside this book by the gods and his job is to fulfill a woman's every wish and fantasy when it comes to being in the bedroom his whole life he's been treated basically as property and for women to use him and so when grace ends up summoning him our heroine she starts treating him like a normal real person and he's very dumbfounded and doesn't know how to function basically he doesn't know how to interact with her if she doesn't want to be in the bedroom with him he doesn't really know what to do um and so she ends up helping him finding himself and realizing who he truly is and possibly helping him break this curse of being inside this book he can only be with her for a month um and then he gets put back inside the book so they have a time limit here this was super duper fun i really enjoyed it i can understand why People think this is a classic when it comes to paranormal romances. And I definitely think I'll pick up another Sherilyn Kenyon in the future. And so I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. Then I ended up reading Beautiful Beginning by Christina Lauren. This is a novella, a part of the Beautiful Bastard series. This is number 3.5. So you read this one in between book three and book four. This is the wedding of Chloe and Bennett from book one. I can't get too deep into this because it's number 3.5 in a series. Overall though, I found this highly entertaining, really fun. I love the Beautiful Bastards series. I just have so much fun reading them. And I really loved seeing Chloe and Bennett's like, story come full circle. I'm pretty sure there are even more novellas about them possibly in the future. So I can't wait to dive into those, but 
Long story short, really enjoyed this one. Gave it a four out of five stars. If, also, if you didn't know what the Beautiful Bastard series is, the first book is called Beautiful Bastard and it is a office hate to love romance. If you want a hate to love, steamy as heck romance book, please pick that up. It's so much fun. Then we have two books, a part of the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. I believe I've read both of these during the Paranormal Romance Readathon. The first one being Dearest Ivy by J.R. Ward. This is number 15.5 in the series and it is a novella and it doesn't really relate all that much to the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. Um, like three characters who are a part of the main series pop up randomly, but overall the two main characters have nothing to do with and we have not met them at all before this point. I think they possibly might pop up in future books, which is super exciting. So this is about Ivy and Silas and they are both vampires. They are part of the vampire society the black dagger brotherhood is about a group of vampires or society of vampires that live on earth and nobody nor humans no humans know that they exist but they do they have their own society they have their own king they have their own protectors they live in the world so ivy is out one night with her friend at a club and this beautiful man comes up to her and asks her out and she has literally no idea because she thinks she is a plain jane nothing exciting about her and she can't believe that this beautiful man would come and ask her out. And so she thinks that he's joking and everything and he asks her out and tells her to be at this restaurant tomorrow night for a date with him. And she's like, oh, I'm not gonna go because he's obviously not gonna be there. And on a whim, the next night she ends up going and he is actually there. It's a romance between the two of them. This one's actually a little bit heartbreaking once you get into it, there's a twist in here. Was not expecting it, but I ended up really enjoying it and I gave it a four out of five stars. Then I ended up reading book number 16, which is The Thief by J.R. Ward. Now I have been looking forward to this romance in this book for forever. I'm not gonna get too deep into this because this is book number 16 in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. I was mainly really excited for this because it's about a couple that I have been dying for their romance and I felt like I got kind of what I wanted. I gave it four stars. The ending was really, really rushed to me. I, I, I wanted more from that, but I overall loved the character development and I loved seeing their relationship grow, but the ending just wrapped it up way too nicely and fast for me to where I could not give it five stars. I just wanted more from the ending, if you know what I mean. But overall, I really enjoyed this one and I am almost done with this series or I'm almost caught up with this series, you guys. I can't wait to be caught up. The next six books are all a part of the Immortals After Dark series. <laughs> I was on a binge for this series. I'm still on a binge for this series. I took a little bit of a break, but I'm gonna get back into it. Um, I really enjoy this series. This is a paranormal romance series dealing with all different kinds of paranormal lore. You have Valkyrie, Lycae, vampires, demons, so many different kinds of paranormal creatures, and they're all in relationships with each other, and it is chef's kiss amazing so i'm just gonna tell you the book what i rated it and a little two sentence most summary of it and go on to the next one because this is a series so i don't want to spoil anything or get anything away you know so first we have measure of a dark prince by cressley cole this is book number eight in the series and i ended up giving this one four out of five stars this is a romance between a like or a werewolf and a Valkyrie who is also a huntress. That's pretty good. Then I read book number 10, which is Demon from the Dark by Cressley Cole. I gave this one five out of five stars. This is one of my favorites in the series. It is so good. So this one is a romance between a witch and a demon slash vampire. My favorite part of this, one of my favorite, favorite tropes in books is a language barrier and there is a language barrier in this and I love language barriers in books when a couple or per people meet and they can't communicate to one another but they still fall in love because they love the person for who they are not just for what they're saying like they fall for who this person is and y'all this one is so stinking good <laughs> then I ended up reading book number 10 was that book number nine Anyway, this is book number 10. The other one was book number nine. <laughs> and this one is Dreams of a Dark Warrior by Cressley Cole. This one is about Regan the Radiant, who is a Valkyrie. And this is her romance with Declan Chase, who may or may not be a reincarnated love of hers. So she fell in love with a Viking many, many years ago and he died. And he may or may not have reincarnated four times. Um, but this time when he reincarnates into Declan, he may or may not be out to kill her. So. There's that dynamic there. I gave this one five stars. 
loved it so good. I then ended up reading Lothair, which is book number 11 by Cressley Cole. I ended up giving this one four stars. This is a romance between Lothair, who is one of the oldest vampires in existence, and his relationship with a human woman. But he doesn't think it's between him and a human woman. He thinks that his mate is the sorceress demoness woman who has possessed this human woman when in actuality his mate may or may not be the human woman the sorceress is possessing again amazing four stars next i have shadow's claim which is book number 12. this is a romance between a woman who is half demoness half sorceress and her relationship with a vampire. But it's not really a relationship. She is being auctioned off by her uncle who is her guardian because she's a princess. And there is a competition and whoever wins this competition will end up being her husband. And our hero may or may not be in this competition. I enjoyed this one. I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. And lastly, a part of this series, I have McCreeve by Cressley Cole, which is book number 13. I gave this one five out of five stars. It was so good. Big trigger warning for sexual assault and possibly grooming in this one um, and PTSD. McCreeve, our hero, is a Lyke, who is again a werewolf shifter and he has some traumatic past when it comes to women and his family and just like he has some PTSD in general, which is the first chunk of this book that you get to read about. And it is his romance with a human woman who is the daughter of his torturer. And you read about his torture in previous books um, because a couple books all happen during the same time, but with different couples. And they're all on this island where humans have captured them and are experimenting on them, which is horrible. So he was one of those people. And so he may or may not find his mate in the daughter of the man who tortured him. Um, but she may or may not be a human. I'm not gonna tell you what she is though because that would be a huge spoiler because I was shocked. <laughs> I love this one. Five out of five stars. And the last book that I'm gonna be talking about today, which is my favorite book of the month, it's It Ain't Me Babe by Tilly Cole. This is the first book a part of the Hades Hangman series and oh my flippin' word. This was so good. I listened to this one on Audible. I used credit that I had before I canceled my subscription service. Y'all, this one is so good. It's so good. This is a motorcycle club romance and y'all, please get the audiobook for this book. It is so good. So this is a romance between, this is a romance between Salome and Styx. And at the beginning of this book, you get to see Styx and Salome end up a meeting when they're young children through a fence. Six actually has a severe stutter and he struggled with that his whole entire life. And he's only ever been able to actually speak in front of two people in his whole life, his best friend and his dad. When he's not around them, he uses sign language. One day in the woods, he ends up coming across this young girl. Well, he's also young too. They're both young in age at this point. Stumbles across this girl behind a fence crying and he realizes he can talk in front of her. Long story short, they never see each other again after that point. Up until Styx finds a bloody woman behind his motorcycle clubhouse. She may or may not be that same little girl and her name is Salome and she was raised in a cult. So when he first saw her, she was behind the fence of a horrible cult and she ends up escaping on her wedding night. And so it's the romance between the two of them. I loved this so much. We have our innocent heroine and our gruff hero and oh, I love that trope so much. <laughs> and I also just love um, the communication aspect for it. I love Styx becoming more comfortable with who he is throughout the book and becoming more comfortable with communicating with other people. Amazing, and I loved our heroine becoming who she is and becoming strong and sitting up for herself and realizing how horrible this cult is that she was raised in. And I cannot wait to read the rest of these books. I am so excited because I believe the rest of the books are about um, different men in the motorcycle club and women who were in that cult. So, very excited. I adored this one, please go read it. It deals with dark subject matter, just by the way, if you're not into dark stuff, don't read this. It deals with dark subject matter, as I said before. So there you have it. Those were the 17 books that I ended up completing in November. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. <laughs>